Now that if you've watched any of the last couple of videos, we'll have seen that we've been doing a lot with Terraform lately. We covered creating some basic templates and deploying uh, infrastructure to Azure. We then integrated with GitHub, we created some environments, pushed some of the, some secrets from our Azure infrastructure to those environments. We then integrated with Cloudflare so we could set up DNS to point to our infrastructure that was sitting in Azure. And then we also used from Cloudflare um, collecting the origin cert and pushing that into our Azure infrastructure. With all these Terraform scripts laying around, we haven't looked much at security. I'm not talking about the security of the application, but more of the security of the templates themselves. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at scanning infrastructure's code um, for vulnerabilities. As I mentioned in the previous videos already, um, the, re the repo for this does build off the previous video um, where we primarily looked at uh, Cloudflare. So as I mentioned, that one was where we looked at connecting to Cloudflare for the DNS and the origin certs. But we also touched on um, Podman and as our demo site, we created an Nginx container um, that hosted a single site. In this video, though, we're going to look at some options that you could ha that you would have for s infrastructure scanning or your Terraform scanning. Um, then we're going to dig deeper into Snake specifically and some of the options that Snake gives you. And then we're going to take a look at the GitHub code scanning alerts. As with the previous videos, this code is available on GitHub. So if you go to uh, my demo org, which is devstarops-org, and then forward slash scanning dash IAC dash four dash vulnerabilities, you'll be able to pick up the code that is being shown today. So the first tool I want to mention is TFSEC, which was created by AquaSecurity. As a company, they have a couple of security tools with TFSEC being their open source one. Next up is Bridge Crew by Prisma. This platform does more than just infrastructure as code scanning. For example, it also looks at supply chain security, drift detection and secret scanning as some of the other things that it does. But today we'll be looking at Snake. Um, again, similar to Bridge Crew. The platform does a lot more than just scanning of infrastructure as code. Um, but for the purposes of this video, uh, we're going to look at the infrastructure as code parts of what Snake can offer us. For the demo itself, we'll look at uh, using it through the CLR, uh, the web UI inside GitHub Actions, and then we'll look at that information and how it surfaces itself in the code scanning alerts. If we take a look at the getting started uh, with the CLR docs, you'll see that it mentions that we need to install the CLR and then uh, follow the auth command. When we look at that install guide, um, there's a couple of ways to install uh, the CLR or to use the CLR. I've gone with um, this npm install, um, but there's a whole bunch of different options that you can use here, including um, bringing it down as a Docker container. For the auth itself, you just end up running snake auth. So in my case, I end up running uh, npm install uh, like so. At the moment, I already have that installed, so it shouldn't do anything. Um, maybe it did. Um, after that, you then go and run uh, snake auth. If I could type properly. Run snake auth. That then redirects you to their site where you authenticate. So now I've authenticated. Then once you're done with that, you can now start testing your code. So to do that, I'm just going to grab this from this path where I am. So as I mentioned, okay, let me make this a bit bigger so it's easier to see. So this is that same demo repo that we had, and we've got a couple of Terraform files in here. So we're going to go run um, snake IAC test. And now with this 
um, session being auth, we will be able to scan this code. So that's what it was to scanning. So you can see it's found um, some low or some medium security issues, some low security issues, and two high security issues as well, which we get a, a nice little um, summary for that right at the bottom. Now, if you go back to the docs, um, you'll notice that if we scroll down, there is um, arguments that you can pass to the CLR that will output the serif files. And that serif file is something that you can use in your GitHub uh, workflows to publish, well, to get the file that you can publish to the um, security center type thing. But we'll take a look at what that looks like just now. The next bit that I want to do here is again with the same repo. I want to go to their web UI. So at app.snake.io, um, I'm logged in with my um, demo account that's linked to my demo org. What I'm going to do here is say add new project from GitHub. And I'm going to go and choose this same repo, so the scanning ISC for vulnerabilities repo. And after a bit of this going off, it's going to come back and it's going to tell me that it's found some stuff. So you should see that this should end up matching. Um, so you can see too low, three medium, too high, and it's found too low, three medium, and too high. What that's gone and done is it's pulled my code from GitHub, so what I currently have running on GitHub, on GitHub and it's pulled it into their platform and shown me um, what those vulnerabilities are. And from here, I can easily click on a file. It will show me um, what the problems are inside uh, that file directly. And then the last thing that we want to do, because these are great, um, especially this one, while you're busy testing stuff locally, before you push your code, you can scan for vulnerabilities, which is super useful. And their UI is, is pretty cool, uh, bringing all those vulnerabilities to that one sort of pane of glass, if you will, across all your different repos. So you can see when we were back um, on this homepage, it will show me um, all my different vulnerabilities across my different projects. But the way you want to probably do stuff is that it needs to run every time your code runs. So for that, uh, well, every time your code changes, should I say. So for that, we're going to go off here to Actions. And we're going to create a new workflow. Then we'll scroll down to Security, click View All. And from here, we'll search for Snake. That'll come up with the Snake container workflow, as well as the Snake infrastructure's code workflow. And so for this demo, we're going to click on Configure for the Snake infrastructure's code demo, well, workflow. This comes out the box ready for us to use. Uh, we're just going to change this to rather run at uh, 2.30 in the morning. I didn't even notice that. So the tooltip tells you exactly where it's running. That's pretty cool. Um, the workflow itself is quite well documented through comments. So you shouldn't have any issues um, getting this to run. The one change that I do want to make here, though, is um, I don't want to run this for a specific file. Instead, I want to run for everything. So I'm just going to change that to be a dot. And the other change I need to go and make is add this token um, before this runs. So for now, because I'm, I'm going to check that it's the main branch and we don't want it to fail, I'm going to go and create that first. Okay. So I've gone and created that now. So if I do uh, commit this now to the main branch, so that trigger does run. 
this should work without issues. You can see that similar output there uh, from our CLI when we ran it. So we didn't have to go and write that ourselves. Now we could just reuse the existing task. So now when we go to the security tab, if you didn't know we had worked before, um, this wouldn't have said enable before. Um, if we go over to code scanner, you can see there is now seven alerts and you can see this tab also now said that there is seven alerts. The workflow that this is saying this came from that ran 25 seconds ago and the branch was main. Um, you can see uh, there's all the different um, alerts that came through and similar to the other UI if you click on this it'll tell you um, where that is and give you some information about it as well as who first checked that in um, so if this lives here for a while and then someone uh, checks in some new code um, later down the road it'll say well there's still the same vulnerability um, and it was first checked in by me uh, um, at this date and time okay so that's all for this video it's a nice short one today the the topic of vulnerability scanning is can get quite um, quite deep and I, th I wanted to keep this quite light and, and more mention the fact that you can uh, do scanning for your infrastructure templates um, it's, it's not one of those areas that you sort of need to deploy first and then scan uh, which puts you in a, a position where you're already at risk um, you can rather scan beforehand and make sure you're deploying what will be safe infrastructure um, into your different environments if you have any questions or comments um, leave them below Otherwise, ping me on Twitter, maybe LinkedIn, um, or you can go to my profile site and see where else you can find me um, if you don't want to use any of those platforms. Thanks. Cheers.